doing a video series for years called uh, Creation Seminar Series. Video number one talks about the age of the earth, how to prove the earth cannot possibly be billions of years old. And when you take away time, the evolutionist theory collapses in a heap. There's no evidence for evolution anyway, but they always say, well, given enough time, billions of years, there, there's, the time isn't there. And there's scientific ways to prove that. DVD number two is about the Garden of Eden. The Bible says the people live to be 900 years old. How do you live to be 900? Well, just don't die. That's a secret. Uh, video number three is all about dinosaurs. They've always lived with man. They're mentioned in the Bible. There could be some still alive. Noah took them on the ark. Number four is all about, it's two hours on lies in the textbooks. Kids are just plain being lied to. They're being told there's evidence for evolution, and all of it's been destroyed years ago. They're still teaching the kids in school, the baby growing, and the mother has gill slits, proven wrong in 1874. Still in there. Get the lies out of the textbooks. Number five is called the dangers of evolution. This theory is not only dumb, it's dangerous. That was the foundation philosophy behind Hitler and Stalin and the advent of communism. Number six, the Hoven theory. Where did the water for the flood come from? Where did it go? What did the flood do? It's all about that on video six. Number seven, question and answer, is actually two DVDs and five hours long. And I, I put a lot of stuff in there. Questions like, what is a kind? Don't all scientists believe in evolution? This is my two, first three slides in that presentation. Uh, different religions, why I'm not a Pentecostal, why I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist or a Catholic or a Calvinist, et cetera. And then we covered that one. In, on Sunday mornings, we cover these um, uh, doctrinal type things. Why, why do you believe that? Okay. And then the very last one, slide number 3950, bottom right-hand corner, 3950, enter. Do ERVs prove evolution? What are viruses anyway? ERVs, okay, endogenous retroviruses. Basic scientific information about these critical components within the genome. The discovery of the ERV took place in the late 60s and early 70s. Now stop right there. Evolution has been taught way before that. They started teaching that dumb idea way before they discovered ERVs. But this is now their big, you know, uh, uh, sugar daddy to fix the problems. Why did you believe evolution before the early six, in the early 60s and for the last 100 years before that? So all the evidence has been destroyed, and this is their latest one, ERV. Three types of ERV were found around the same time. And here they're named right there for you. So these ERVs, what are they? The discovery of endogenous retroviruses. Science News, 2014, scientists identify new beneficial function of endogenous retroviruses in immune response. Just the word virus seems to conjure up, you know, bad, evil, danger. No, no, no. Viruses can be wonderful. They can be good. They can be necessary. Endogenous retroviruses play a critical role in the body's immune defense against common bacterial and viral pathogens, researchers have found. Retroviruses are best known for causing contagious scourges such as AIDS, or more sporadically, cancer. But there have beneficial uses for them. Re retroviral promoters in the human genome. There's an article come out in 2008, okay? The data suggests that ERVs may regulate human transcription on a large scale. They're, they're functioning. They cover 22.4% of the human genome. There's a function to these things. Endogenous retroviruses function as gene expression, regulatory elements during mammalian pre-implantation embryo development. The woman gets pregnant. Now the egg has to attach itself into the uterus, into the wall. Before it gets implanted, the ERVs are very important to make sure this goes smoothly. They serve a function. So the evolutionists in their desperation to find evidence to reject God have jumped on that one, and it's just not true. Pick a new one, fellas. ERVs are not going to work for you, okay? Are viruses alive, yes or no? Living things use energy. Well, if we define life a certain way, viruses don't fit into that category, but it's because of our definition of life that we gave it. If I said smart people live in Alabama, nowhere else, well, then I just made a classification that you, you can't be smart if you don't live in Alabama. That's not true. Maybe that is true. Never mind. But uh, okay. outside a host cell, viruses do not use energy. They only become active when they come into contact with a host cell. Once activated, they use the host cell energy and tools to make more virus. Move in, live for free in the cell, and use all the tools that are available there to make new viruses. Pretty amazing when you stop and think about it.
Because they do not use their own energy, some scientists do not consider them alive. All right, I don't care if they think they're alive or not. There are several different types of viruses, the uh, spherical, the helical, polyhedron, and complex viruses. How viruses form a protective shell to evade immune system. Your body's trying to kill them. They form their own shell where the body can't affect them. It's a great big, amazingly orchestrated symphony with the viruses and the, the cells in the body. Virology blog did an article that said there are 320,000 different viruses in mammals. How many viruses are there? A lot. Probably haven't even discovered them all. Although viruses are the most often studied pathogens, many are beneficial to their host, providing essential functions in some cases and conditionally beneficial functions in others. Beneficial viruses have been discovered in many different hosts, including bacteria. So the virus can get in the bacteria. These things are tiny. Insects, plants, fungi, and animals. In some viruses, have been, in fact, virus, some viruses have beneficial properties for their hosts in a symbiotic relationship. While other natural laboratory modified viruses can be used to target and kill cancer cells, to treat a variety of genetic diseases as gene and cell therapy tools, or to serve as vaccines or vaccine delivery agents, the good that viruses do. The use of good viruses is common practice. If a survey were to ask non-virologists for their opinion on viruses, the word good would be unlikely to arise. Instead, words such as disease, infection, suffering, life-threatening would likely dominate, as people primarily think of viruses as HIV, Ebola, Ebola, etc. So I think that uh, not all viruses are detrimental. And so you atheists and evolutionists that are using ERVs as your evidence for evolution need to get a new one. OK, that was not going to work. So that's I've just started putting stuff together. I forget, Donnie, how long ago it was in the which debate it was where somebody brought that up as their, you know, their golden arrow to shoot down creation ERVs. So I'm going to really nail that one if James wants to bring it up when we reschedule. Bring it all, James. We're ready. OK, Donnie, that's just our practice. My first time to put these slides up there on ERVs. I'll, I'll tweak it as I get time. But life is really, really busy around here. You have to come. <laughs> it's 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 chaos. I mean, organized chaos, but chaos. So come on down, visit. Can, did, hey, will they let you guys out of Canada yet? Are you still captive? <laughs> I think we might be uh, still held, held captive, unfortunately. But one of these days, I think I'm going to swim across the river and, uh, you know, make my way to to Dow. To see you yeah, guys. well, it's 73 down here right now. What do you got up there in Canada? It's snowing. So <laughs> as I was driving home, we got snow still. So a lot uh, better what, weather where what, you are, Dr. Dino. What is snow? I heard about it. What, <laughs> it's this it's this white stuff that falls from the sky. You can you can have snowball fights with it and build snowmen. I, oh, I yeah, guess that's yeah. Neat. And then you got to pay to heat your house and pay for warm clothing. And I uh, forget it. I'll. I'll stay down here. It's, it's anyway, not worth yeah, it. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd love to uh, debate James or anybody else. Why don't you get all the evolutionists at the same time? Come on together. They can take turns who answers the question. And if you restructure your thing at all, where you get less talk time from us and more Q&A time, uh, that might be, I, I, audience seems to enjoy that. Well, come visit our dinosaur adventure land where God gets the glory for his creation. That's all we want. Amen, brother. Okay. You going to reschedule? Yeah, we're going to reschedule. I'm going to retitle this video too. I'll get a new thumbnail. I'll I'll title it uh, something like Dr. Dino Destroys ERVs because those were some uh, fantastic slides there. So it was still worth it. And uh, Kent, you've been so busy, brother. You take the night off. You deserve a vacation. You've got rewards uh, waiting for you in the next life. So you keep it up and I'll reschedule with, with James W. So, All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Good night all. Okay, brother. God bless. And uh, to the audience, uh, we'll see you soon. We got another show tomorrow. And um, actually tonight, we'll know in probably about 15 minutes, me and uh, brother Matt Powell, we might go live for an hour over on, um, over on either his channel or Ken Hoven official. I'm not entirely sure. I'll know soon. Uh, we're going to go live for about an hour and uh, just kind of demolish evidence for evolution since we've got a window here before uh, logical, plausible, probable would be having his after show, which I believe is scheduled for 10. So uh, stay tuned. I'll let you know, guys. And let me just check the chat. Um, yeah, apologies about tonight. I was looking forward to the debate and, um, 
you know, one of the requirements that I make sure is out there when we schedule uh, these debates for the Evolution Debate Challenge is, you know, a solid uh, mic, a cam, and a decent connection. Uh, because typically these events, uh, we get a big audience and it's always a ton of fun. So I know how disappointing it can be when there's technical issues and when we have to reschedule, especially when we've already got so many events scheduled, it gets a little difficult on rescheduling because it's like, you know, where do we fit it in? Um, we've got a, a ton of main events still for you uh, in March, including some on theology and then soteriology and the nature of God related topics. For example, Chris Date versus Dr. Shabir Ali is coming up and it's coming up fast. So within the next couple of weeks, we will be live for this much anticipated debate. Then we've also got Robert Sungenis and Kelly Powers, the justification debate. So they're going to be uh, debating sola fide. Does the Bible teach salvation is by faith alone? And again, last thing I'll say before I shut it down for the night. And uh, we're still going to have a good night, though, guys, because like I said, we'll know if uh, Matt Powell and I are going to be going live for an hour. And we still have John Maddox, who I guess he'll be turning his show into more of a, an open mic where, where we can discuss the topic of evolution. And anybody is welcome, of course. So this debate was a ton of fun. We set a new record. I think we had about 440 live at some point during the debate. Uh, Tom Chump and Ken Oven, they made for an incredibly entertaining debate. And just a couple of days ago, we had another uh, epic debate on the age of the earth. Professor David McQueen and Taylor from the Snake Was Right YouTube channel. They had a very uh, sophisticated debate, uh, a very enjoyable debate debate. And as we know, Taylor is going to be back first thing next month, taking the evolution debate challenge. Uh, tomorrow we will be here, the great transitional fossils debate. Hopefully uh, we can get some solid connections <laughs> from both of these gentlemen. Um, the key is to make sure that you're doing the show on earth and not on another planet. Um, the great transitional fossils debate, Christopher Silvius and uh, Jackson Rowe. But all, all jokes aside, I do appreciate uh, James W. Uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Unfortunately, I understand that sometimes connection and technical uh, issues are inevitable and there's not really much you can do about it. So James, no worries, no sweat. Uh, don't lose any sleep you know, over it. I appreciate you doing this debate and uh, just contact me through email. And we will uh, we'll kind of just fit you in uh, within some of these um, windows over the next month or two that we that we have off. So ch check the chat one more time. Make sure everything's good. OK, uh, God bless everybody. Yes, God bless. Uh, Honesty, Angel. And uh, just stay tuned because I think we're still going to have a couple shows tonight. And so uh, we're still going to have a good, memorable night, guys. Uh, Standing for Truth is out. For now, guys, God bless.